Good evening and welcome. I'm going to be playing a song for you now. It's called Now's the Time. It was written by Charlie Parker, the famous legendary saxophonist. And I'm going to be talking about bebop style of soloing. I'm going to take uh, two choruses of a solo on this. And the solo will be written out for you and available on my website so you can study it. I'm going to be talking about the various uh, licks and, shall we say, vocabulary of the bebop style of playing jazz. So here we go now with Charlie Parker's Now's the Time. I want to talk about what I played now in terms of the solo part of the song. And actually, it's available for you to download on my website so you can study along with me while I'm describing five different elements of improvisation, or five points I would say would be essential points. I want to keep this rather brief, and I don't want to spend too much time. Uh, you know, in this video going over every detail of improvisation, but I want to talk about what I would call the five most important points. And so we'll start with number one, and that is the use of scales in a descending and ascending motion and the use of skips. So improvisation, in fact, all melody is, is, is a, just a combination of scales and skips and then ascending and descending. Okay, so ascending scales, ascending skips, descending scales, and then descending skips. Now, scales can be either, will have either whole steps or combinations of whole steps and half steps. So, when I say scales, I might be talking about chromatic scales, which would be half steps. So, that's very important that you understand the half-step principle because that's paramount as far as improvisation and particularly when you're talking about approach tones and target tones. So I'm going to show you now, we're going to start with scales and skips. I'm going to show you examples of those and how you want to balance them. In other words, not too much ascending motion before you have a descending motion and not too much uh, scales before you have skips. So you want to mix them up in, into a nice combination. So I'm going to show you examples of those um, in the solo that I played now. I want to mention here that I'm not going to be addressing the rhythmic aspects or the phrasing in terms of its timing aspects of improvisation or what the left hand does with the comping or whether we go into chordal type of things. I'm not going to be dealing with that in this, in this video. Mostly the melodic linear type of this this kind of thing the linear aspect of of playing melodic ideas and so on and some of the points within that aspect of improvisation the other ones I'll have to cover in another video it's just too long okay okay this is a 12 bar blues in the key of F and the solo starts on the 12th bar the pickups and the pickups are this. If you have the sheet in front of you, you can follow along. But it goes like this. We're in the key of F. It's a C7 chord, actually, which is going to turn around, create the five of moving into back to one. So we have this. So now right there you have a chromatic, which would be a form of a beginning of a scale, chromatic movement. 
then a skip up to a D, like so it's A flat A, D, and then the target tone on, the, on beat one on the F7 chord is the five of the chord. See, so it's important we get that, that target tone, but what we have here is, so now you have some chromatic movement. This is scalar here. Now you have a, a descending skips down to that target tone. Now the next thing that happens is we have a chromatic movement up to the next target tone on the B flat seven. So you have target tone into D. Then you have a skip, then a sort of scalar mo movement here. Then you have a turn. So I call that scalar up and then down, but chromatic. Well, that's a whole step. Up a half step, down a half step, chromatic. Then a skip and then down a whole step and then skipping back up. So you see the movement, the wave-like action of the ascending, descending, combinations of chromatics and combinations of whole steps and in moving in both ascending and descending direction like this. And that, that's, those are 16th notes, but it's a typical type of turn that you hear in jazz a lot. Okay, so now you see, and we, as we continue, you're going to see more of this. So you have a skip here now, and then a chromatic movement to a target tone. A skip up, and then chromatic, and then another skip, and now chromatic. And now, there you have another skip descending. So, ascending up to there, down to there, up again, then that type of wave-like action of ascending, descending, combinations of skips and uh, scale movement, either chromatic or whole steps, is what makes a nice melodic balance. Okay, so we're going to move on now to phrase shapes. I'm going to talk about phrase shapes. Actually, all melody are combinations of phrases and interesting shapes of phrases. In other words, usually a good phrase has a combination of ascending movement, descending, skips, and stepwise or chromatic. And that's what you have right here at the beginning of the solo. You have it has a phrase shape. So it has a beginning and has an ending, and it has a. It's very clear. It's not um, in any way nebulous or you know it doesn't it doesn't sound like it's hanging there it sort of has a feeling of being complete that's a complete phrase descending ascending then descending first some chromatic and then some skips and then another whole step then another connection okay so now here's another phrase see so those two phrases complement each other and they're definite phrase shapes that's one of the most important things that it be melodic. One of the greatest of all uh, jazz pianists, Horace Silver, was great. One of his, he was paramount, a genius at creating interesting phrases and then complementing them. Either through sequence, transposing it into another, you know, step of the scale, or complementing a phrase with another phrase that sort of answered it. So these, this is what, sort of what happens here. You get a very a good sense of completeness there because I'm back on the tonic, okay? So now we go, now here's a little turn. Then this, there's an approach to a augmented fifth. So I have to be aware of the augmented fifth being in the chord there. The F7 has an augmented fifth. One, two, three, four, five, augmented. And I'm using that in my melody here now. So descending chromatic. Ascending and a skip down to the target tone of the augmented fifth. And now that scale utilizes the flat nine and the sharp nine. There's the sharp nine, there's the flat nine. So you have, that's actually, we could call that a superlocrian scale. I'm not going to get into that right now. That's another, another lesson. But I just want to talk about the phrase shapes, okay? So now we have... Now we have a blues scale. So that's what I'm saying by phrases there. I'm going to just make up some now. You 
you see how they are shapes of phrases. They're not just a series of runs or a series of skips or moving in one direction or, or another direction, but they actually have shape. And they have a feeling of beginning and ending and a feeling of completeness. I mean, even if you took like the melody of, uh, say, this song, Bye Bye Blackbird, it would be... That's one complete phrase there. And then it's, it's complemented like this. You see how you have a complete answer to the first phrase. So it's like call and response, that type of idea. So that's important. Phrase shapes are paramount in their importance to be, to have good improvisation, you have to be able to shape the phrase and have a sense of beginning and ending. Okay, now we'll move on to the next topic, which will be approach tones and target tones. The next element or concept I want to talk about that's very important is the concept of approach tones and target tones. So if we just took a scale like the F7 scale, which would be a mixolydian built on B flat, so we're going to play a, a B flat scale starting on F. F. So that's our scale. Within that, we have these chord tones, the F, A, C, E flat. And all the other notes in the scale are approach tones. So the G approaches the A or approaches the F. This is approach tone that approaches the A or approaches the C. And then the D either can approach the C. In other words, approach tones can approach from above or below. So. That's it, and plus you can have all the chromatic notes in between. Any chromatic note can approach any of those target tones. So, on measure, if you look at measure 26, I have a phrase there that really utilizes the approach tone, target tone concept in an interesting sort of formula. You might look at it that way. In other words, it starts on the F, it's an F7 chord, starts on the F, and then it goes a half step below, and then a whole step above, and then back down to the F. So. That, that formula would be half step below, whole step above. Then down to the next target tone, then the same formula, half step below, whole tone above. Or you could say, you could actually say scale tone above. Then down to the next, now we're on the B flat seven chord. So now we go down to a target tone, which is the seventh of the chord, and then it goes down a half step, then a whole step above, then down, whole step, then down to the next target tone, then a half step below, whole step above. So that's a really interesting sounding lick because of that formula. It's, it's, it's kind of a, an intelligent use of approach tones and, and, and target tones in an interesting way or a melodic way. It sounds like this. You know. So it makes a lot of sense because of that. Now I have in Sorry, my book, I, I had to recharge the batteries. As I was saying, in my book, I have these examples or this, this sort of exercise in which you are looking at all the various ways you can approach a, a, any given tone within the chord. So like I'm saying, you can approach it from two half steps below, two half steps above, a whole step above and a half step below, or a whole step below, a half step. In other words, all the various combinations that are possible which are good, it's a good exercise to practice to get the idea of this approach tone, target tone concept. And then to put these within phrases that you design using that, these formulas, so to speak. I mean, it's not, you can't think of it as too uh, intellectual because, you know, improvisation really has to come from your imagination at the spur of the moment. But it's good to study various, shall we call them, elements or techniques within that and then use those Use the, the combination of theory and everything else that goes into improvisation, which is imagination, spontaneity, your heart, your soul, all that goes into, into uh, making a good improvisational solo. So we're going to move on to the next point now, which is the use of the blues scale.
The next point or element I want to talk about are scales, and particularly the blue scale. But before I talk about that, I also want to mention regarding the last segment where I was talking about improvisation. You can learn it in a technical way like I'm showing you with this video. But you also have to have heart and soul and passion. And, and um, the other thing is imagination and creativity. The great players have a lot of creativity. And that's just something you have or you don't have, I guess. Maybe you can develop it um, by living your life and having all sorts of experiences and then just experimenting with creativity. But at any rate, I'm going to get into the blues scale now, which I use in this. This is a blues but it's a rather sophisticated Charlie Parker type of blues where you're not just playing one, four, five, like a B.B. King kind of blues, but you're, you're adding a two, five, one into the four, C minor, F7. You're putting in the six chord dominant, the three chord A minor seven, and a D7, and a two chord G minor seven. So you're having turnarounds, or what we call cyclical movement within that. And um, so the blues scale is interesting to put in there. Now we know the blues scale is built Say we build it on the key of F or the F7 chord, root, flat 3, 4, sharp 4 or flat 5, 5, flat 7, then back to 1, a root. That's our, our scale. Now the first time I use it here on um, measure 19, I have it on the B flat 7 chord, I have, I have that, actually I have that, that's use of the blues scale. All the notes that are in there are just the blue scale and it has a certain sound to it that's different from all the other scales. It's different from this. It's this. It's very blue. You know, blue scales are very bluesy sounding, right? That makes a lot of sense. Then I use it again uh, an interesting way in measure 31 or 30. We have the same thing, a B flat scale and I'm going Now, the interesting thing about that is I'm playing a D on the top, but the melody is really the lower notes over here with the index and third finger, or middle finger. I'm using this fifth finger, the pinky here, staying on the D, but I'm playing a blues scale with these other notes like this. It has a very unique sound to it, that blues scale. D really fits the B flat chord because it's the third of the chord. See, if I was doing it in, in F, it would be like this. But it's, so you, that's a good thing to use, the blues scale. You can use it on any tune, but particularly we're playing a blues now, a more sophisticated blues, but the simple blues scale also works. And in contrast with the other sort of chromaticism that I'm using throughout other, other than that. I'm, now I go to the blues scale, and now I, you can hear it is a blues scale. Sounds bluesy. Okay, now we're going to move to the next segment and talk about the last element that I'm going to touch on today called the sequences. The last element I'm going to talk about or point about improvisation, I would call sequences. Now these are when you're repeating a phrase like, you know, you're repeating a phrase and you're transposing it or you're playing it on another step of the scale or whatever. And you know, like it's a very important thing because look at melodies. I mean, if you had Satin Doll in it and he hadn't written a sequence, it would have sounded maybe... it wouldn't have followed. The sequence is something you can hold on to in your head. Wow, that's an interesting idea. Now it's continued or it's transposed. So I have a couple of examples here that where I used it in this solo and I'm going to look at those measures now. So I had it on measure 30, let's see, 31. Right there, that's measure 32. I had this. And then I went to this. You can see how that follows. In other words, the sequence is often 
a, a shape of a phrase, or it can also be a rhythmic idea, like Satin Doll's a rhythmic idea, as well as a shape of a phrase that's da 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 He could have written it like this. da 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 But no, it continues the same shape. So this went like this. So that's one sequence idea. And the other one is this. On measure 26, 28, 28 I have this figure. And then I continue it like this. So I transpose it from the F chord to the C minor chord there now, to the F7. See, so it, it has to work, of course, with the target tones of the chords that you're playing, but it's, it's a, a really interesting thing to try to do in your solos is to uh, play sequences. So now you can look at this score and see what I did with those sequences and then try to figure some out on your own. So we'll wrap it up now. Now I'm going to wrap things up by just saying that I showed you five elements of improvisation that I think are very important. The scales, ascending, descending, the skips, ascending, descending, combining those in interesting ways that create balance or what I call wave action, ascending and descending. The phrase shapes, which is extremely important that you create phrases. You're not just playing runs or lines or scales, but you're creating interesting melodic phrases. And then, of course, the most important thing really is how you're approaching certain target tones, the approach tones and the target tones. And then the use of scales, and that's a, a, a very large subject that I could cover. It's in my book. I have all the scales in there you need to learn. But in this case, talking about the blues scale, how to insert it into this, into your improvisation. And then lastly, the sequences, which are you know, very smart ways of, of creating something you can latch on to and then hear repeated in some way. It's ra rather clever. Those are the most important elements. I'll, I'll continue. I have another uh, class on improvisation in the next segment. So thanks so much for watching. As usual, please send me a comment, a thumbs up, or a question. I'd be happy to answer anything. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time around.